talking media it's your buddy mikey in the building somebody asked me to do a video on this i'm not going to talk too much i'm going to let it play shout out to monsieur set z 230 k go ahead and subscribe to the channel like i just did and watch this video on the changing demographic of america and its possible impacts let's watch it. the united states has seen a massive surge in its hispanic population since the turn of the century and even saw this building up in the media decades prior this population growth is attributable to both a significant rise in immigration, both legal and illegal, as well as a notably higher birth rate among Hispanic Americans when compared to the rest of the domestic population. Whether you characterize Hispanics as a racial or ethnic identity, both of which being somewhat imperfect descriptors, its presence as a group is prominent, surpassing African Americans as the second largest racial group in the country, standing at about 19 to 21 percent of the total population. Or if we were to count all Hispanics as a single ethnic group, they would be the largest ethnic population, surpassing the second largest group of German Americans who only stand at about 13 percent of the total population, having fallen from around 22 percent to 19. I believe the Hispanic and Latino population, listen, I'm including all, they like to separate themselves, you know, Spain, I'm white, Mexican, I'm brown, blah, blah, blah. They're all one. They all speak Spanish. I know they have their inner tribal issues. However, they all speak Spanish, which is the unifier. I argue it's probably 30, 35 percent at a minimum right now with the immigration at a minimum. 90. And if we were to further break this down along ancestral nationality, Mexican Americans alone nearly match German Americans and African Americans with an estimated 12% of the total American population. That's just one country. Politicians from both parties have also taken note of this, and there has been a noticeable shift in political rhetoric to sway Hispanic American favor to their respective sides, while at the very same time we're seeing an increased participation by Hispanic Americans in national level politics. With all these factors in mind, we must ask, could the future of America be Hispanic? Hello audience, Mr. Z here with another video for you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. We have videos like this every week, so be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Before we go any further, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's donated to us on Patreon, Utreon, and right here on YouTube through channel memberships. Your donations really go a long way to keeping this channel going, and by donating to us across any of these platforms, you'll get access to some great perks, including physical merch, a custom-designed flag wallpaper, and access to an exclusive members-only Discord server where you can enter your scenarios for a chance to have them made into full video, and support our channel, and of course you can join the button right below this video. If you can't donate, any will out. Now, back to the video. Hispanic Americans are the second fastest growing demographic in the U.S., second only to Asian Americans who comprise a much smaller segment of the population and whose proportional growth is inflated because of this. The Hispanic population is expected to reach 29% of the total American population by 2050 and is expected to peak at 35 to 40% in 2065. These numbers I think that's false. It's going to be sooner rather than later. Um, and what's happening here? Why are you even making this video? For certain cultures, I'll, I'll speak for the black culture, um, the Hispanic, the Latin American group is not is actually not too favorable for you, for us. All right, it's not. Um, you're gonna you're probably gonna see some Jim Crow era type things. Um, if you look at Southern uh, Florida, California, Los Angeles, San Diego, um, the the problem is the integration. A lot of Hispanics are already in the comments, and I'll say this: you're too much of the population, so the comments will always be swayed to your direction. There's nothing you, we can do about that. Again, I'm just doing the news, third party, giving you what's probably going to happen. Miami is mostly Spanish speaking. My mom, I grew up in Elizabeth. It was a town that was mixed, black and white, um, uh, you know, majority white. That has shifted to majority Spanish. They're looking at my mom on the street that she's lived on since 1983 as if she's the immigrant there at times. Like, why are you, why are you here? Uh, as if she just came in. So it's very interesting dynamic. It's going to continue to change in that fashion. San Antonio, all these little countries and uh, these uh, cities in, 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 in Texas are experiencing the pain of the shift. And Asian Americans are going to have pain as well if they don't increase their population or keep their areas as the legislative government is going to start to change. Okay, the kids that were born into these families of Latin roots, I'll call. I know it's not, I know Latin's not one thing. It's Mexico, Cuban, I got it. Everything's different. But they were born into these roots, still have that culture within them, and they're going to lobby to, you know, things that are favorable to them. Uh, so you're going to start to see them in police forces. I see it all over Mexico at the border. Like, why can't the border be stopped? Well, the people that are at the border managing it happen to be Latin Americans, uh, maybe second generation. Okay? So you're not going to stop that growth. It's going to continue. They may stop everybody else from coming in, but people that look like them or sound like them, forget about it. White Latinas, brown Latinas. All in the same, it will change. Let's keep playing it. Numbers are enormous, especially when we consider that the current most widespread ethnic group in the United States, German Americans, only ever hit an estimated peak of around 20 to 30 percent and only did so after a several decade long period. Enough that in 1751, Ben Franklin had been complaining about the replacement of Anglo Americans by German. What's the benefit of German Americans? Let's be honest, they have created and invented a lot of things in America. So Latin Americans are going, I'm seeing in the comments, we're going to be the new superpower. 
A superpower is by the things that you bring to the table uh, from an inventive perspective. Um, and you just got to look at, all you got to do is Google the owners of certain things and see who created it. And if, you know, if you don't see a Latin name there, no offense, you know, that's going to be your destroyer, right? So you're leaving your third world country for some, some are first world, like Spain. I don't think it's scary Spain, a third world, but second world country. And you're coming to a first world country and you think because you're in the government system, et cetera, that, okay, things are just going to keep flowing. The reason why it flows is the integration, the integration and diversity and, and, the, and, and the levelness of that has made it good. When you start to unlevel that, and you start to get empowered and start to take roles. The same thing you left becomes what you have come to here. And, 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 you're, and you've brought over what you have left in this country. And that's what's going to happen. Let's continue. Americans in the state of Pennsylvania. Immigration has been the foremost driver of this population growth, with the U.S. experiencing an unprecedented rise in immigration from Latin America since the Reformed Immigration Act of 1965 ended the proportional immigration criteria previously in place. Reforms in the early 90s only increased the opportunity for immigration to the United States and further saw a rise in the prevalence of illegal border crossings. Just prior to this, Ronald Reagan had hoped to resolve the crisis of illegal immigration by both beefing up border security and providing amnesty to all illegal immigrants within the country. However, border security measures were lackluster and amnesty only encouraged greater unauthorized border crossings. Like I just told you, it's going to be lackluster because most of the people doing the management of it happen to be of Latin descent. And a lot of people talking about Trump's going to come in and change it. Do you see Trump's comment? Trump's a very intelligent man. Do you see his comment? Okay. He said blacks and Latins taking jobs away. You know why he said Latin? He realizes that there's too many and isolating the vote will have him lose the presidency. This, we're looking at the last years of an American speaking uh, government. Because the Latin population will startly, startly start to, and I know a lot of Latinos are going to oh, third generation doesn't speak Spanish. Listen, man, listen. Just go to Miami, just go to LA, go to New York. The stores are in Spanish. Some of these folks have been here for years, they don't even speak English. Okay? And you, you can't argue that. Again, this is just commentary. Tell them about the change. People are going to have to make moves. Let's continue. As many across Mexico and the rest of Latin America now recognize a possibility for gaining legal residency in the U.S. without needing follow legal procedures. This trend has largely continued into the present day, and because of the United States policy of birthright citizenship, the children of illegal immigrants automatically gain citizenship status, and their parents gain protection from deportation. Naturally, this has encouraged a practice of crossing the border to give birth in the U.S. for the sake of gaining these benefits. Aside from immigration trends, Hispanic American births within the U.S. are quickly on the rise, all the while the number of both white and black American births have declined. What this indicates is that while other domestic American populations slow in their growth or even begin to shrink, the Hispanic American population will grow even higher, leaving it to have an even greater share of the national population. The Hispanic population in America is both concentrated and building a presence across the country. Already the states of Texas, California, and New Mexico have plurality Hispanic populations. That is, Hispanics outnumber whites, blacks, and other racial groups in these states, but don't yet have a majority. Within 30 years, Hispanic majorities will almost certainly emerge across these states, and further within Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, and Florida, major pluralities or even potential majorities emerging in New York and New Jersey, and likely plurality... What's the problem with this? What's wrong with this? The problem is, is like I just said, the diversity won't be there. If you don't speak Spanish, you're out of it. OK, you'll have to intermarry into a Spanish family or something. It'll be over from that perspective. And the things that you enjoy from America because of its diversity, we were attracting the top Asian engineers and doctors and scientists, the top Indian engineers, doctors, tech guys, etc. You have the top German engineers, blah, blah, blah. The list goes on. Some of the top African designers, blah, blah, blah. They all come here. That'll be gone. Latin America does not invite any other cultures in in scale. That's why Spain is the way it is. That's why Mexico is the way it is. They don't invite. They're great workers, but there comes a point, especially with the AI and the robot, that the workers are needed. You need innovation. Okay, and they, I'm, I'm certain they have that. Maybe they get the opportunity to do that. Maybe the, maybe the future, they, it changes. But as of now, they stick to each other. That's why you're coming here. That's why people come to America. It's diverse and it's balanced because the immigration is controlled. Now that it's uncontrolled, you got too many of maybe one group coming in and you can't control it. And then 
It's a takeover. And you go, what happened? What happened to America? That's what you're, that's what you're going to hear from Latin America. That's exactly what you're going to hear. Then they start blaming each other. Then there's an internal civil war between the tribes, Mexican versus Puerto Rican versus uh, the Colombian versus Venezuela versus Ecuador versus El Salvador. They'll all be fighting each other. But that's where we're headed in the future. Keep watching. Facilities in Oklahoma, Georgia, Illinois, Washington, Oregon, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maryland, North Carolina, Virginia, and Delaware. The Southwest and Florida are almost certain to become the strongholds of Hispanic American culture and political influence, influencing both conservative and liberal culture and politics by acting as a major support base which both parties will hope to appeal to and actively orient their policies to further include Hispanic American interests. At this stage, Hispanic Americans are likely to continue supporting the Democratic Party, giving the party strong favoritism toward immigrant groups as opposed to the Republican Party's firmer position on nativism and stemming immigration. Given historic political trends among immigrants, the support for the more liberal faction will likely continue until the Hispanic American population feels it has gained all it can from democratic politics and thoroughly shifted national policy, moving in a more pro-Hispanic direction. This was seen among German, Scandinavian, and Irish Americans who opposed the conservative establishment of the Democratic Party during the early to mid-1800s and helped usher in an era of Republican dominance until disagreements later emerged between them and Anglo-Americans over labor issues, the Great Migration, and matters of assimilation. Likewise, the same was seen with third waivers, that is, the Southern Europeans, Eastern Europeans, and more newly arriving Irish Americans who threw their support behind FDR for the support he provided to the lower class laborers, immigrants, and urban areas. These third waivers being among the most active participants in the later civil rights movement, which they treated as not merely a movement of equality for African Americans, but a means to cripple the conservative social establishment of the country, which they saw as prejudiced toward not just African Americans, but themselves as well. And in the after. Self preservation, selfishness abounds, that's just the way life goes. They highlighted, no offense, Tariq Nasheed, this is why he keeps talking to reparations, right? The laws <laughs> that were put in place and fall for by one group, right, allow for a lot of the successes of other groups. But the group that has been, the <laughs> and, 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 and hey, y'all look at yourself as well. I'm not, I'm not one of them brothers. Gotta look at yourself. Gotta do better for yourself. Can't blame everybody all the time, but... However, he's totally correct. The stipulations that happen in the Civil Rights Act allow for a lot more appreciation of many different factors, including women. And the advantages taken can be had in a negative light or a positive light. Right now, no offense, it looks like the advantages were to the negative for those that fought for it. Okay, that includes white males. White American males also fought alongside African Americans, etc., to get, get the freedoms. OK, but now does it look like a backfire? It does. Now, the reason being is, let's be honest, it's not Mexican-Americans fault. It's not the African-Americans, you know, Africans coming over fault. I'll say who fault it is, including me. We just didn't have enough kids. OK, because that was the fight. See, people didn't realize that was the fight. Right. They're like, what are you talking about? That's not a fight. You shouldn't fight to have all these kids. You got to be sensible. Right. We don't need that many people on earth. Correct. However, the other groups didn't think in that way. <laughs> the other groups are still old school, right? They're still old school, you know? They're still, hey, gotta have kids, gotta have kids, gotta have kids, gotta have kids. That's the dream, gotta have kids. Make uh, God says you should repopulate, you know? So King James got to relook at what was written there, <laughs> right? That's what's put in there. They think that's right. And now we're seeing maybe, I don't want to say it. I don't want to say it. I'll let you say it. Is, 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 is a lot of kids good or bad? Just, just think about it. I hate to say that. I hate to say that, especially with resources, especially with homelessness. Uh, you know, you guys hate when I say it, but I'm, I'm honest. I say I'm straightforward. What do you think? Let's keep going. The aftermath of the civil rights era, these same populations would also assume more conservative positions now that the social mindset of the nation was more favorable to them. In the same vein, Hispanic Americans will almost certainly play a significant role as activists and power brokers in Republican and Democratic elections, with their support remaining firmly for them. That's the big difference between the African American culture and the Latino culture. These guys are jumping into so many different roles. They're in the construction, they're lobbying with the unions, they're already in these positions. They're in the po political positions already. They will take that over quickly. It will be Latin America. I believe English will be a second language. Let's keep going. The excuse will be, I'm already seeing it in the comments. It was already for Spain already. I'm already seeing all those comments. Because people will always divert to what benefits them. And they're already, I think they're already probably majority here. We don't even know. It. Let's keep going. Party which favors them the most for the time that being the Democratic Party. However, once the course we've discussed has been run, once national views become more pro-Hispanic, and of course once the Hispanic population settles in and accumulates a greater degree of both monetary and social capital, its politics will evolve to reflect new needs. 
Almost certainly, the Hispanic political divide in the United States will be highly reminiscent of what it has been across other large Latin American countries. A struggle between a conservative, Catholic, potentially authoritarian, or at least hierarchical faction, and a socially liberal... So, you've just finished writing your book, and are ready to share it with the world. But wait. Liberal, secular, egalitarian, or even socialist faction. How this would affect national politics is a bit difficult to say, but there are some assumptions we can make. Foremost, that the conservative ideology of the conservative Hispanics will be diametrically opposed to the current dominant conservative ideology in America, which is rooted in small government and Protestant principles. Everyone keeps talking about the conservative going to share a lot of the same values. That doesn't matter. The problem is they won't have representation in the government. Who gives a shit if everybody's conservative? If you're not going to hire the German guy to do the job. If you're not going to hire the guy from England to do the job. You don't speak Spanish. Sorry. You're out of there. Okay? They basically become the same slave class. Listen, the rich people, the one percenters, the billionaires and all that, they can just move. They got the money to move. They don't really care. Everyone's just a worker to them. Don't worry about those guys. But anybody else is, is realizing 99% of us, woo, if you got kids, it's going to be a rough ride if they don't speak Spanish. Principles. Some Hispanic groups, particularly Venezuelans and Cubans who have fled authoritarian left-wing regimes, have come to adopt a small government view, but by and large, conservative Hispanic Americans trend in favor of strong governments, something which may align them more with the populations of the big government northeastern and midwestern conservatives who have remained sidelined since the rise of neoconservatism. What this could result in is a fractured conservative America torn between small government and big government politics and which is ultimately unable to unite and challenge its left-wing opposition. Given the rise of figures like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the emergence of progressivism, it seems very likely the Democratic Party's gradual embracing of the Hispanic left's ideology will be far more seamless. However, there's also the possibility that the conservative factions, despite their disagreements, find increasingly progressive policy to be so egregious that they coalesce into an opposition faction, though it will no doubt be rocked by much the same divide seen within the Republican Party today. The United States probably won't end up as another Mexico or Brazil, but aspects of those countries will definitely begin to become apparent within American culture, politics, and life on a very noticeable scale. He's wrong. False. Just by what you see in Miami, Los Angeles, New York City, Elizabeth, they will take over the judicial system. They will take over the lawmaking. It will become their country. The only issue they're going to have is their lack of integration. They're going to say, chinko, chinko. They got a lot of racial comments. Chinko, negro, boda, boda. You know, they're going to do all that shit. You're not going to realize the reason why America is so great is because of that. Yes, there is strength and diversity, guys. Yes, sir. Speaking from the German diversity that was let in. Can you imagine if you let German, Germany inside the United States? Now, a lot of you are going to say, well, we weren't talking about them. See, everyone tries to be different. German engineering is probably one of the reasons why America is a stronghold. One of the greatest, some of the greatest engineers in history are from Germany. Did you hear me? Look it up. Germany. Germany. It's probably one of the key reasons why America is the fabric of what it is today. Inclusive of everybody, right? Blacks as well and all that. But Germany had a large role to play in it. Okay? When you start losing those strong, strong groups that contribute, Lord have mercy. Guys, you're right back in Latin America. You're bringing Latin America here. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. I'm just telling you. For the next few decades. What should be most worried about are the spread of those same troubles which plague these countries, namely organized and general crime and widespread political corruption. There you go. This change in America's demographics is already in motion and only accelerates every day the American border yeah. remains open. Cartels. Intensifying border security and completing yeah. the border wall will stop or significantly slow this inflow, and yeah. deportations of illegal immigrants will put a dent in the Hispanic population, but even with that, and even if we assume the proposed Republican policy of ending birthright citizenship is put into effect, the Hispanic American population that remains will likely still be sufficient enough to cause this change in the country by 2065. But what do you think? That's a, that's a fact. Cartels will then take over. Cartels are salivating right now. They're like, we're going to really take this over. You are. Um, this is where we're at. You got to prepare yourself, right? Funny how Mexicans are kicking Americans out of Mexico. Isn't that funny? <laughs> so are some of the Latin American countries. Very funny. So that's that's the next issue. Where are you going to go? Europe is under, under pure attack. I've uh, been there. London is crazy. Doesn't even look like London. Um, Paris as well. All these big cities. Um, this is what it's going to be. Um, nothing you can do about it. Just the way of the land. You want a video? I did it. Here it is. Bye.